bought a ranch. A plum for my own plum tree. You know, normally I save these for my daughter when we go to school and drop off the kids, but today is a special occasion. Pretty lucky to be in this position I'm at. So far we've got plums, persimmon, two peach trees. This is gonna be the orchard here. So over here on the back side of the orchard, I'm thinking line this hillside with fruit trees, maybe start making some platforms to the top of the hill, and then make a slide that can slide all the way down for the kids and it'll come right back here. You know, speaking of this hillside, there's a few things on this property that were just kind of mind blowing to me. Just up the hill here, I bet you'll never guess what's next to that oak tree. You'll never guess what it is. I'll give you a hint. This entire area was founded around 1849, the time of the gold rush. What is this giant hole doing here? And what is this grate doing here? Well, from what I understand, this entire pasture used to hold cows and they would graze and cut down on this dry grass. And the previous owner did not want any cows falling in this mine. There's four mines on this property. Ah. So standing right here, this mine looks like it goes down at about a 45 degree angle and I have no idea how deep it goes. You can see a couple birds nests down there. And I think we might have some cave exploration in our near future. There are so many things on this property that I wanna show you and I will show you in this video, but there's one thing that tipped the scale for me into buying this property. What's this channel called again? It's been four or five months since I posted. I almost forgot, oh yeah. It's called Fisherman's Life. Check this out. What do you think about that? When I saw that for the first time and all the possibilities that came with it, I had to have it. Now, I didn't only want it for myself. My very first thought was how I could share it with you. Yes, you. Whoever's watching this, you, I'm talking to you. See that tree? One of the first things I'm gonna do is build a floating dock and have it sit right out there in the middle of this pond. Supposedly, it's loaded with crappie, catfish, bass, and bluegill. We're about to find out. But if I could do that, then all of you can come out here, fish this pond, or if you're new to fishing, you could learn to fish right here with me. That last statement actually makes me want to show you another secret that's on this property, but I'll show that to you later. So to fish this pond, I'm going to be starting out with these little crappie jigs, see if there's any crappie in there. And I've got this Johnny Morris seven foot casting rod that I bought from Bass Pro about eight, nine years ago. This was one of the first rods I bought on the channel and I barely got to use it because it's all ocean fishing but it's gonna be this Z-Man, that turd thing, TRD thing. Supposedly that's really good for bass. So I'm gonna to try to catch a bass on that. And I got a drop shot here with this cherry wood rod and a Shakespeare president. I think it's Shakespeare, is it? No, it's Fluger with a drop shot. And that's what I'll be putting either a worm or those crappie jigs. Let's cast out. I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to be quiet when bass fishing. I've been hell allowed. All right, first cast in the pond. And yes, this place is in California. It's only about two and a half hours from San Francisco, maybe two hours, 15 from San Jose. I could go out this whole video telling you little things about what's happened in the past four months. We had the street fair, huge success, but my friend and video editor, Justin came over from Texas. He filmed the whole thing. We had amazing footage. Somehow, somebody knew where he was staying. On the last day, he went to get boba with his girlfriend. When they were in the store, just for two minutes, they came out. And after they came out, someone had broken in their window, stole all his camera gear, stole all the footage. And that was the street fair video. Never found the guys. I don't really mind because we got the memories. Everybody who was there 
we'll do it again next year. But I was just more sad that Justin lost all his stuff. Other than that, I've been busy moving, closing on this property, pretty much moving from San Francisco, getting the kids in school. But now that they're in school, I'll have a little bit more time for myself and for you, I guess you could say, where I could make more videos. And I don't know about this Z-Man thing, this turd thing. We'll do about five more casts and then we'll switch it up, maybe to the Senko. Oh, got one. <laughs> got one, just as I was saying that. Oh man, a little bass, a little baby, little baby bass. So we're not going to be doing any catch and cooks from this pond. All right, if you guys come up here, we can go to the rivers, catch some trout and do that. Everything here is going to be barbless. Just learning how to fish or just fishing for fun. You know what might be better actually is if you came out here and taught me what to do with this bass fishing. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. Just casting out. All I do is rock fishing from shore pretty much. Like, is this even how I should be fishing it? I'm just kind of working it on the bottom, bouncing it real slow. There's a one tenth ounce weight on here. I'm thinking this pond is probably about 10 or 15 feet at the deepest spots. I'm switching to a drop shot with a one eighth ounce weight. Maybe I don't even need a weight. Maybe I don't even need a weight out here at all. But I'm going to try this little worm. I mean, that looks very weird to me. It looks like a hot dog on a hook, but I've seen other people use it, so I'm going to give it a shot myself. This is eight pound test. Let's tighten up the drag a bit. There we go. All right. Right there. I just seen some fish jumping over there. Bust out the spinning rod, baby, right there. Just popping that worm like that hot dog. fish on. Oh, oh, feels good. Oh, oh baby, I got fish on. It's in the weeds. Oh, 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 oh what is this? Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, it's a nice one on the worm. Swimming over here gently, quietly. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, it's a largemouth bass, baby. Nice, nice. Look at that. We got a largemouth bass, baby. We're gonna keep track of these. This one has a black spot right there on its back. We'll call this one Spot. Let Spot go quietly. Oh, I'm slipping in the mud. That's okay. There you go, Spot. There you go, baby. Oh, yes. Nice. Nice. Oh, man, that was awesome. So this property is on a well. And you can tell where the water line used to be for this pond. From what I understand, it is spring-fed from underneath. It's never been dry for 40 years. But one thing I would love to do is to drill another well close by and just have it feed continuously. Oh my goodness. Oh, I got one. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, awesome. Just have it feed continuously and fill this thing up five, ten more feet. Maybe start feeding the, the bass because there's a good amount of them in here. Just get the population real nice and healthy. Oh, there's something walking over here. We've got a special guest. Let me introduce you to Murphy. There you go, bud. Got some? There you go. You'd rather have it on the floor? All right. There you go, buddy. Just a resident donkey. Oh, man, it's hot out here. You know, there's this big log that I need to cut 
But before I do that, I just want to have some watermelon. You know, the cool thing about living out here is that there's just so much freedom. You know, I love San Francisco. Mmm. But, I mean, I don't know, you just can't really do as much. And I'll still be going back to San Francisco. But I just love the freedom out here. It's just beautiful. Man, that 22 is fun to shoot. I had another watermelon lying around. And I got this 10 millimeter. And so many people have told me that it's, it's going to throw you ass on your back if you shoot it even with two hands. I mean, I don't think so. It's 10 millimeter, strong round. Let's see how it does one-handed. Oh. Oh. Not bad. Uh, these are my hollow points. I don't want to waste all of those. I should probably apologize to my wife, Sarah. I just had the urge to shoot a watermelon. All right, let's go up on the hill. So there's a tree that has fallen on the pathway on top of this hill. Over the hill, there's a lake. Supposedly, past that tree, there's an access road to the lake. Let's see if I can cut that tree and find out. So I bought a nice set of power tools. That's why I have this chainsaw. There's a lot of little projects I want to do around the land, like building a playground for the kids, planting a bunch of trees, building sheds, doing all kinds of stuff, putting up pools. So I have a second channel for that. It's called A Man and His Land. I just posted the first video there, so I haven't been completely missing. Now the question is, where do I cut? Or do I make a path around the tree? The chainsaw I have is 14 inches, so it's not very big. And you can tell that this log is thick. This is probably at least 28 inches thick right here. That's where I was planning to cut. I cut off a bunch of these smaller limbs earlier, the other day. I just want to head over there on that side and see what's going on over there. See where this path down is, if there even is one. I'm thinking since I've got the bike, it might just be easier to come around right here and avoid this giant trunk. Come around there and just go explore. See what's all way down over there. See if there really are any paths, because I don't see any, but there's the lake. I would love to get down there. Instead of going over those big rocks, going over the small ones, because this looks like a cow path. Just following the local animals. They know the best way. All right, back on the trail. I don't think anybody's been here in years other than some cows. So no idea what's past this. A lot of burned trees. know about this I feel like there's not gonna be much over here but we're here already so we might as well check take a look not so sure about this access point I don't think there's any trails down here this side let's go on the other side but while I'm up here I just can't help but think how amazing of a campground this would be a lot of this ridge is completely flat there's no light pollution whatsoever. The stars shine as bright as you can get. And at night, oh man, it's comfortable. Peaceful. And just a nice getaway from the city. 
that's kind of what I was looking for originally but we're almost to the end so since we're up here let's go check it out and finish off this little exploration well greeted with some barbed wire either that's somebody else's property which I don't think it is or I'm not sure they're just trying to stop the cows from getting onto this side or that side not quite sure about that although there are some very well-worn game trails coming up here oh would you look at that you guys see that on the hill way over there that thing over there that's my other house let's go check that out that was the thing I wanted to show you and the thing that I wanted to share with you so let's make our way back down the hill uh, at least we tried I guess there is no access to the river this way unfortunately shoot It's been a couple days since I last filmed and that's because I know there's giant fish in that pond and I really want to show you just what's in there. A couple days later, now I got a crossbow, got some figs, pomegranates, Asian pears and some other fruit trees. But before I play with this thing, let's catch that fish. Let me squeeze on by here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. I want to start out with the same kind of thing, not the drop shot, but the wacky rig with the worm on the bottom, kind of weedless, as you can see right there. I'm also thinking because this is eight pound mono, mono stretches. And being that this bait is kind of far away from me, I really have to set the hook hard to translate that power into the hook. still just about the same size I wonder what the issue is they're not getting much bigger than this I wonder why just not enough food in here probably It's like a week later now and I told myself I'm not going to shave or cut my hair unless I catch this bass. So hopefully I can do that today. But a lot of things have been changing and updating. Now got two barn cats. We're just raising them in the garage for about a week. I got to change that cat litter. And 12 chickens. 12 chickens. Hey little guy. This guy is so friendly. 
Hey, what's up? Last time I was using that little hook right there, but today I'm gonna go bigger. I'm gonna do like the, the weedless thing, except I'm just gonna rig it like a wacky rig. So the hook is bigger, whatever fish that gets hooked, it's going to go into its lip. Cutest little, cutest little thing. Oh, you little cute guy. I'm going straight back to the place where I got that bite last week. But today I'm using the casting rod. Anybody who does a lot of bass fishing, can you answer me this? With a casting rod, are you supposed to set the drag to what you want to set the hook with? Because I feel like usually when I set the hook in the ocean, I'll hold my thumb on the spool and then I'll set it. But the pound test leader is so light that if I do that, then it's just gonna break, right? So I get, got my drag set like kind of tight, not that tight, but tight enough where I'm not going to put my finger on the spool if I get a bite, but let's do this. This is where he was last time. Not what I wanted, but that's a big old crappie right there. I mean, it's, it's a good fish, but I feel like they could be healthier. <laughs> God, it's so fun, dude. It's so fun to pull these little fish up. Even if they're little, it's so fun. Could be some big ones in there. I like this underhand flip though. Oh, that was a good one. Came off. Wasn't ready for it. Oh, there's a fish. That's the one. That's the one, y'all. Oh, it's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one I've been waiting for. This one's pretty good. Come on in here. Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Is that the one? He was in the back of that cut. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, come on up here. Come on up here. Don't come off. He's in the weeds. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. That's the one, dude. That's the one. That's the one I was looking for. There's big ones in here. I knew there were big ones in here. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my goodness. What a fish, y'all. This thing is huge. That's what I've been waiting to get. Look at that thing. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Can't believe it. I finally caught it. All right, little guy. Big guy, I should say. 18 inch bass. Oh my gosh. What a fish, dude. Oh my God. Oh, right up onto the seaweed. Let's go, let's go. Oh my goodness, that's what we've been waiting for for a week. I think it's the sun is still high enough. Let me drive up to the other place to show you the last thing I want to show you. Let me see if I can get there in one minute. You know, I could wait for tomorrow. I want to try to show you guys right now. Well, we still got a little bit of light. It's a beautiful, beautiful, oh my God, the most beautiful sunset up here. The most beautiful. And it's so cool that I can, I can share it with you. I mean, there's, there's two houses on the property and I'm driving on my own roads right now. These are private fisherman's life roads. I know you can't barely see me. I don't have time to focus this thing. All I got time to do is drive up and show you. Woohoo! Yeah, baby! Oh my gosh. I've been waiting to get that thing. That thing was a beast. Three stories up to a porch. Let me show you inside. 
Uh, looks like we're just catching it. The final moments before the sun goes down completely. <laughs> hey, hey, there's my car. From the third floor, my heart is beating and racing. Whew. But that's what I wanted to show you. The view up here is spectacular. It's a little smoggy. I guess there's some fires in Oregon right now. But uh, this place is going to be available for rent. Well, if you guys want to come and stay and fish the pond, or if you just want a very, very secluded place to get away from the city and relax, you can see me, fish with me, or not. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that you get a nice, peaceful getaway. And look at that, man. It is spectacular. It is so beautiful up here. I mean, the camera here does not do it justice, that's for sure. You can see the pond down there. Oh, oh man, had to race up here. But if you, if you do want to come up here, we have a website for the rentals. It's GoSierraFoothills.com. So you can check out the places. There's a bunch of pictures and stuff. And now that I finally caught that bass, I can finally start exploring the area more. I was just waiting to get this video done. Now I can take the bike and go up river, explore all the rivers and creeks, do some more fishing. So if you're still watching, thanks for being so patient with me in these past four or five months. It's just been so hectic, but things are finally starting to settle down. And even I'll have a chance to enjoy this view for a little while. Now that things have finally slowed down. Last but not least, don't forget to check out the second channel, A Man and His Land. I just bought a skid steer yesterday. That's another thing. It's a Bobcat 863 high flow wheeled. I would like to get tracks, but I got a good deal. I'll tell you all about it on the YouTube channel, A Man and His Land. Thanks for watching, y'all. It's been a pleasure throughout these years. And the only way, the only reason I have this, I know I'm rambling, is just because of you guys. So I'm so thankful that you guys were on with me through this whole journey. Hope you've been well. Talk to you soon. All right, y'all. Peace.